They're coming. stands the palatial mansion where Joseph B. Chapin was born and where he died. The house was built by Mr. Chapin's grandfather over a hundred years ago. Here come the distinguished funeral guests now. We see Mr. Arthur McHenry, the late Mr. Chapin's law partner, and Mr. Joseph B. Chapin, Jr., Miss Ann Chapin, popular member of the Gibbsville Younger Set, and Mrs. Edith Chapin, the bereaved widow. Now arriving is Governor Lloyd Williams. With him are State Senator Mike Slattery and Mr. Robert Hooker, editor of the Gibbsville Standard. All three were close personal friends of the departed, and even at this distance, their grief is evident. Governor, give us a smile, will you please? Now, boys, this is a funeral. Thank you. Mr. Paul Donaldson, the famous multimillionaire banker from New York, and Lieutenant General Coates, who drove here from Washington for the funeral. Edith, I call myself a dealer in words, but today I have none to offer. Today, Robert, but not yesterday. Oh, you saw my editorial? I consider it one of the finest pieces of writing I've ever read. And not only because it was about Joe. The Bar Association is having it reprinted. It's an empty honor when I think of... Well, I wish the occasion hadn't arose, uh, arisen. Thank you. I want to try and say a few words to each of our guests here. Oh, you shouldn't be downstairs here at all. It's a rare sight to see such courage in these days. I've always lived for my husband, my family, nothing else. You're very brave, Edith Chapin. Get Joby. He should be down here with us. Looks tacky. I'll try to get him downstairs. Edith. Arthur, dear. You were Joe's best friend. Stay beside me. You know how painfully shy I am. It's so good of you to come, Governor. Joe would have appreciated it. The least I could do, Edith. And you, Mike. He was always so fond of you. Mike, you're in trouble. She wants something. What, for instance? Oh, say, a small ambassadorship or some other post suitable to a widow of wealth and refinement. I don't owe her a thing. But she thinks you owe her a hundred grand. Madam, request your presence downstairs. One more slug and I might be up to it. Gary, you know you get plastered on two drinks. This is a day to get plastered. Maybe you've got the right idea. <laughs> is she being noble, our bereaved mother? Yes, she's being noble. Too terribly stiff upper lip and all that. When do you go back to camp? I have no five tonight. First time I ever look forward to it. I'm beginning to appreciate why father needed this stuff. Did you love him, Joby? He was my father, the only one I ever had. I don't mean like that. I mean, did you positively love him as a human being? <laughs> well, not the way you did, old girl. In spite of what he did to you. He didn't do it. He went along with her. He let her do it. Only because he went by his rule book. It was an awfully thin little book, but the rules in it were important. Such as, the mother takes charge when the daughter commits a social error, like getting herself pregnant. Joby, do we have to have that? Perhaps I'm sorry I didn't think. Forget it. Sorry, Anna Banana? I can take almost anything, but not the music. Music does it to you like nothing else. Where's Charlie now? Coast Guard. Uh, what do you call them? Chief Petty Officer. Leading a band. He's married and lives in New Jersey. Not another one, Joby. 
Come on. Better go downstairs. Feeding time at the zoo. I hope Madam's getting something out of it. Toby, let her put on her act. Let her enjoy putting on her act. After all, who has she got? You and me. Her son and daughter. Who has she got? <laughs> well, you left out the most important one of all. Who? Herself. She has herself. <laughs> and she's been having herself for years and years. That's why the biggest thing in Joseph B. Chapin's life was his funeral. Are you aware of what she did to father? What did she do to father? Poisoned him. Oh, now, Joby, wait a minute. I'm waiting. How did she poison him? With a slow poison, undetectable to modern scientific methods. Oh, I get it. Now you get it. She did something to him that was like a slow poison. You get it. Why? He was in her way. She didn't need him anymore. Joby, what did happen to him? Only five years ago, remember? He was so strong and so jolly and so eager for life. Say you remember. I remember. Don't think, Anna Banana. Thinking stinks. Yes, thinking stinks. of honor has threatened to shoot me if I make a speech. <laughs> but I think we can all safely wish him happy, happy, and many, many. To Joe Chapin. God bless him. God bless him. Frankly, I don't know what we're celebrating. A man's 50th birthday should be kept a secret. Like, like all of a woman's birthdays. Oh, you're just a young sprout. Well, I guess I can't complain. I have good friends, as tonight has proved. A pair of fine children. I'm sorry Joby can't be with us tonight, but he couldn't get away from school. And I have Edith. <laughs> well, I don't know about you old crocs, but I'm going to dance with a beautiful young lady. I guess I have the right because I've been paying her bills for quite a few years. Come on, Ann. seen with me, you shouldn't have invited me. My husband invited you. Because I'm the district attorney and couldn't be left out. 
Exactly. Here I was thinking I'd made the social grade at last. Hi, Joe. And would you honor your old Uncle Arthur? You're making me very happy, Edith. You promised never to annoy me. And I think you're drunk. Drunk, but discreet. After all, I've kept our little secret for 15 years. A gentleman would have forgotten it. But I'm not a gentleman. <laughs> oh, I heard that one when I was a freshman and you were older. <laughs> Aspirin. These days, champagne doesn't exhilarate. It just gives me a headache. <laughs> Scotch and Saratoga fishing, no ice. Joe, you ought to take a good look at yourself. In what way? You're 50 years old today. We haven't too much time left, you and I. Time for what? Tell me, have you got a girlfriend? No. You ought to come to New York with me sometime. I'll fix you up with a little group I know. You will? Oh. And they're not kids, but who wants kids? New York's overrun with the fanciest good-looking dames in the world, and there isn't a thing they don't know. Where do you get time to make all your millions? Listen, I'm downtown at 10 o'clock just after the bell rings. Some guys go to a gin. I take a dame to a nightclub. Same effect. Tell me something. Have you ever been out with another woman uh, since you married Edith, or are you too much of a gentleman to answer that? I'll answer it, and the answer is no. You poor, miserable jerk. You've never got anything out of life, and boy, you wouldn't know how to start now. Paul, if you really got anything out of your kind of life, you wouldn't brag about it so much. After you, Don Juan. crime was smoking, but I think there's a lot more. Old Potty's writing you a letter. Anne, go to bed. Mother, I was... I say, go to bed. Yes, Mother. See you later. Stop that! I'll call Dr. Potts in the morning. Maybe he'll... Take my tip and save you 15 cents. Old Potty's had it. You still have to prepare for college. We'll have to send you to some tutoring school. Father, Father, you know Bill Wysanski in my class? Well, his father's the pianist. You know, Laszlo Wysanski. He gave a concert at school last month, and afterwards I played for him. He said I could easily get a scholarship at Juilliard. What's Juilliard? The music school in New York, the Mr. Music school. Well, it's famous, Mother. You get a chance to study with the top men. Classical and jazz, I What could... about Yale? What about law school? You know that Arthur McHenry and I have always had our hearts set on you coming into the firm with us. Well, it was an idea, that's all. Well, perhaps... A very can... foolish idea. But, Mother, I... uh, we'll sleep on it and discuss it in the morning. Yes, sir, but it means... Good night, Joby. Good night, sir. Good night, Joby. Good night, Mother. Come in. Oh, were you already asleep? No, I just turned off the light this minute. Came to say good night. Good night, you dear man, my lovely father. Your lovely antique father. Oh, stop boasting. Father, what are you going to do about Joby? I haven't decided yet. You know, he really has talent. He certainly displays a talent for getting into trouble. That's where you're so different. You've never given me a moment to worry. Good night, dear aunt. Good night. Good night, my lovely daughter. Good night. What time do you have to be at the office tomorrow? I have to be in court at 10 o'clock. Well, you'd better tell Marion then. Yes, sir? Marion, I'll have breakfast at 8.30. Thank you. Good night. 
You know, I've been thinking about this Juilliard school. Joe, if we let Joby go to a place like that, what would your friends say? The, the people that really count, like Paul Donaldson, for instance. I really don't give a hang what Paul Donaldson would say. I like Paul, but he's not a man I admire. I've never understood Joby, and I don't suppose I ever will, but I, I, I want to help him. Help him ruin his life? Well, it's his life, Edith. And have we no responsibilities as his parents? Yes, we're responsible, all right, and that's what makes it so tough to decide. One thing is certain, he's got to go through college. He can't afford to miss out on that. Afterwards, we'll see. It's time enough then to go to Juilliard, if he, if he still wants to. Jazz pianist, what an ambition. Speaking of ambitions, what were you and Mike Slattery discussing at the party? He asked me to have lunch tomorrow. He did? Do you think he's guessed anything? Maybe. Now I've got to decide whether to break the date or keep it. Oh, keep it, of course. You wanted him to come to you. I don't know, he just... When you get right down to it, I'm no politician. Neither was Wendell Wilkie a year ago. A year from now, he may be president of the United States. In four years, you could be the one... Hey, Edith, Edith, <laughs> wait, wait a minute. This is just the way we planned it. Now the professionals are getting interested. That's what worries me. Why should it? You need the Mike Slatteries and they need you. You want me to look at this? I think I see $20,000. You want me to put this in my pocket? It's about afraid there's a dictograph in this office. I take it this isn't just your usual campaign contribution. Mike, you haven't picked the nominees for the top state offices yet. Governor and United States Senator. No. I don't want either of them. You don't want to be governor or senator, is that it? That's it. Frankly, a million dollars wouldn't get you either of them. I'm not completely an innocent, Mike. My grandfather was lieutenant governor of this state. Oh, you want the nomination for lieutenant governor, is that it? Yes. Who knows you want it? You and Edith, that's all. Well, speaking personally, I'd like to see you get it. And not only as a friend. That's good enough for me, Mike. Now that we've got this for openers. Openers? Well, you know what the boys are going to say. Who's Joe Chapin? Who ever heard of him outside of Landingo County? Let's say this would impress the boys, but wouldn't impress them enough. How much would, would impress them enough? That's for you to say, Joe. If I'm forced to, I'll go five times this amount. $100,000. Can I tell the boys you're good for that? If they're good for the nomination, if they'll shake hands on it. Oh, they won't shake hands on anything, Joe. Not in a tough year like this. Well. I'll uh, tell you what I'll do with you, Joe. I'll keep this. I won't ask you for the rest of it unless, in my honest opinion, you have the inside track for the nomination. But you'll have to trust me, Joe. And this? You've kissed this goodbye, no matter what happens. You understand? Mike, you're a wonder. At least you didn't call me a smart Irishman. Only because I forgot to. I like it when people like you forget that, John. Goodbye, Mrs. Lattery. I never even knew you worked for your husband. He's a slippery lad. I never let him out of my sight. Peg makes all the major decisions in this oven. You'll hear from me soon. All right, Mike. You get that? Every word. Want me to play it back? Later. Why would a fellow like Joe Chapin want to be lieutenant governor? It doesn't make sense. Unless he wants to fly even higher. Well, much higher. He ruled out senator and gov. Are you thinking the same thing I am? What, for instance? I can't say it. The words have a hard time getting out of my mouth. The same thing Mr. Wilkie wants? Say it, girl. Well, Mr. Chapin wants to be president, that's all. Can you 
you imagine now? How do you convince yourself you can be or you ought to be? You marry Edith Stokes Chapin. Oh, you jerked it. You're supposed to squeeze the trigger. Now aim carefully and just squeeze it off. You jerked it again. Marty, come on, let's dance. Huh? Wait a minute, this is important. Oh, come on, you're never gonna hit. The... She did it. There, you see. Man, here, quick sister. Yeah. You know, I feel pretty good about being out with the lieutenant governor's daughter. Don't be silly. Father isn't even nominated yet, let alone elected. Well, everybody's for him. Who's everybody? Well, my father and mother. Everybody they know. It's not everybody. Come on, Buster. I get enough politics at home. Good. I want to find out his name. What do you care what his name is? Come on, Ann. Come on. Hello. Hi. Could you tell me, please, the name of that trumpet player there? Hey, Charlie. What's your name? Oh, boy. What's my name? No kidding. Society girl wants to know. What do you want to know my name for? You got a subpoena? No, it's for my brother. He's got some records made by this band, and he thinks your playing is superb. Really does. Superb, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, good for him. Well, what's your name so I can tell him? Bongiorno. How do you spell that? I better write it down for you. Thanks a lot. You, uh, you want my telephone number too? No, thanks. How about a drink? There's an intermission in a few minutes. You're inviting us? I'm inviting you. Both of you. I got a little jug. I'm sorry we can't make okay. it. Okay. We'll meet you at the intermission. What's the matter with you, anyway? Trying to pick up a bum out of the orchestra like that. Bum? Betty makes more money than you'll make when you're 25. Well, at least I won't be making it that way. Let's go out in the car. No. I'm not going out in the car. Is that final? Yes. It's as final as the Declaration of Independence. Then excuse me. Find somebody else to take you home. You're a lousy trumpet player for all I care. What's your name? Where are you from? I gave you mine, but I was too dumb to get yours. I'm Ann Chapin, and I'm from Gibbsville. Gibbsville, huh? Mm -hmm. What do you know about that? I played there last winter. So that's where you live, huh? All my life. I was born there. I was born in Jersey City, New Jersey. 
Are you married? Am I married? <laughs> Not in this business. Are you? No. Huh. Well, I don't know who belongs to this, but be my guest. Hang on a minute, will you? Mm -hmm. This stuff keeps me going through the intermission. I don't get tired playing, but when I stop, I do. Now, uh, you tell me when. That's fine. None of that stuff for me, thank you. Where did you learn to play? Oh, one of the sisters. You know, the nuns. I went to Pro. The nun who played the trumpet? Why, sure. <laughs> good musician can blow anything. She was good, too. She taught one of the kids clarinet and me the horn. She used to beat her ears back, too, if we didn't practice one hour a day. Sister Angelica. She didn't have to beat my ears back, because after at first, you know, I liked it. Say, do you like a good trumpet? Well, I don't really know much about it. It's my brother. Oh, I love a good horn. Why, if it wasn't for the old axe, I guess I could have been. The axe, the horn, the trumpet, you know? Oh. <laughs> well, like I was saying, I could have been a dead gangster by now. Yeah, a couple of friends of mine, we grew up together. They ended up on a Jersey meadow. Could have been me. Say, so, um... Say, what would your family say if they knew you were out with a guy like me? Mm, plenty. Well, you oughtn't to be. I'm glad you are. But you know, some guys with bands, they'd have half your clothes off by this time. I was taking a chance, wasn't I? Well, what'd you do it for? Kicks? No. No. Don't think that, please. I was just interested. And yours truly? Well, you know, the boys I go out with. Well, when you fold a paper over and over and cut out a paper doll, you get a lot of dolls just alike. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I quit playing with paper dolls, but I know what you mean. Well, you're different. What you're doing is real. Guess I respect you for that. I respect me, but... Well, just to show you how much I respect you, I... I ain't even gonna kiss you. And you're pretty, too. Yeah, you're real pretty. Does it... Does it hurt to play? No, why should it? I don't know. I don't know. But I heard it somewhere. Doesn't it make your lips sore? Well, you want me to kiss you, don't you? If you want to. Time, sonny boy? Sure. Oh, well. it's your car, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, mister. Say, don't you know no better than to take a broad to somebody else's car? Look, I said I was sorry. How do we know you weren't going to steal a car? From the back seat, I was going to steal it, huh? Look, your car was just handy, that's all, yeah, mister. Yeah, I'll say it was handy. Cute chair. Oh. Edith, we have to celebrate. You'll learn to drink at New Haven anyway. To my son on being accepted by Yale. Joby, I'm proud of you. I wish I could share your enthusiasm. Well, Bula Bula. Mr. Slattery is here to see you, sir. Ask him in. 
Come in, Mr. Slattery. Thank you. Well, Mike, this is a pleasant surprise. Will you join us? Thank you, Joe. There isn't time. I picked up the evening sun. Grayson's column, the second paragraph. There. Dog days in Lantanango County. For some reason, Mike Slattery is trying to convince the powers that be that one Joseph B. Chapin of Gibbsville ought to get the nomination for lieutenant governor. Friend Mike must be getting in society up Lantanango Way. This Mr. Chapin is so high and mighty, such a snob that... Perfectly revolting. I never even met this fellow, Grace. You've been running out in front. Now the opposition's had a chance to develop. A cheap political columnist. That isn't what worries me. He's the mouthpiece for the powers that be that he mentions here. What are we going to do about it? Well, luckily, Gorman of the Daily News is in town. He hates this Grayson. Maybe we can get him on our side. Well, I'll be available all day tomorrow. I mean now, Joe. We're taking him to dinner tonight. My car's outside. Well, just as you say, Mike, you're the doctor. You. Sorry to break up your evening, Edith. Perfectly all right. We're very grateful to you. Well, don't be. This piece not only makes a horse's hindquarters out of your husband, it also makes one out of me. Let's go, Joe. Hello, Anne. Hello, Mr. Slattery. Father, could I see you for a minute, please? Well, I'm just on my way out, dear. Will it keep till tomorrow? Sure. Guess it'll keep all right. What's wrong with you? Nothing's wrong. Why should anything be wrong? What is the matter? I'm just a little bushed. It's very hot. You've been mooning around the house all week like a ghost. person to person call to Atlantic City. Charles Bongiorno at the Regal Hotel. My name is Anne Chapin. Oh, my dear. Congratulations, my boy. Now you go you. sit down, make Good yourselves work. comfortable yet. I have strudel and some nice cider for you. Oh, we were just going. Of course we will, Mrs. Hoffman. That's very kind. Good. Come, Conrad. Coming, dear. Well, Mrs. Bongiorno, where do we go from here? Back to Gibbsville. And... Oh, your folks, huh? Well, first we're gonna have some strudel and cider, huh? Hey, uh... Hey, what kind of funny lingo is that, anyway? Pennsylvania Dutch. Get a lot of it around here. <laughs> Wonder what my old lady would have said, me getting married by a Dutchman instead of by a prince. Well, I hope it's legal. It's legal. You are stuck. I'm stuck? Well, you know something? I love it. Love. Love. Really, Anne? Let's try not to be mawkish. Haven't you ever loved anyone? Don't you know what it is? I know what it isn't. My dear child, you're not the first nice girl to lose her head over a completely unsuitable man. Mother Charlie's my husband, and I'm going to have his baby. Yes, the baby, of course, does present a problem. Not to me, it does To your father and me. People still count on their fingers, you know. Why won't you let me see father? Are you afraid to let me see father? It was your father's own wish. He's talking to the young man. And I'm talking to you. Such a lovely honeymoon. Maybe they'll like each other. Wouldn't it be funny if they liked each other? Oh, Anne, please, try and be realistic. Mother! My marriage is real and the baby is real. Father isn't a monster. <laughs> Implying that I am? No! No. But you know how to hurt, and he doesn't. 
You have hurt your father more cruelly today than he's ever been hurt in his life. There's never been a scandal in the Chapin family before. I'm coming at a time like this when he's, he's fighting for his political life, for you to let him down, his favorite, his spoiled darling, his lovely daughter. Did he say this that I'd let him down? What's the difference? I knew it's he did. true. Isn't it? What can I do? You can agree to the annulment of this impossible marriage. My baby. Those things can be explained. You'll go to Europe, stay there for a couple of years. We'll say that you were married and divorced over there. Buongiorno. Could be a fine old Italian family. We might even hint at the title. I won't agree to that. Never. I want to see my father. I want to hear him say these things. I want him to say them to me. Oh! I think I've been very... Father. What's the matter? I want father. Mike. He's here. Good. When I buzz. You slip out through the back, Joe. I'm staying, Mike. Now, Joe, what do you hope to gain by that? He's right, Joe. Let us handle this. We know these lies. What we've dug up on him, he'll never know what hit him. I want to see him for myself. All right, it's your party, Joe, but let us do the talking. We can go in now. Come in, son. Sit down. There. Well, what's this for? You can read, can't you? Personally, I think Mr. Chapin is being extremely generous. Mr. Tim. Hey, what kind of a gag is this anyway? I didn't ask for any money. Look, I want my wife and I want to go home. Nobody's keeping you here. You can go home. Alone. Get this straight, Buster. I'm not taking any dough. Now, where's this guy, Mr. Chapin, anyway? I was told to meet him here. I have complete authority to act for Mr. Chapin. He wants you to take this money and clear out. What kind of a guy is that, anyway? Don't he even want to meet his son-in-law? Not now or ever. Even if he got rid of me, and he's going to have a kid, ain't she my kid? Exactly. And that adds up to a serious crime. What crime? The girl is under 18. Did you ever hear of statutory rape? I didn't even know she was jailbait, and I married her, didn't I? When you had to. I don't think that'll impress the jury. Is that what you want to arrest me for? Well, you just go right ahead. Juries ain't as dumb as all that. Mr. Williams here is the district attorney. I think he knows a little more about juries than you do. I don't care who he is. I'm calling your bluff, mister. With your record? What do you mean, my record? Tell him, Lloyd. Two arrests for petty theft? That was 10 years ago. Picked up on suspicion of armed robbery? I was only 15 years old. I got mixed up with a bunch of guys. Sure. I didn't know what a... Nice little bunch of professional gun. I tell you, I haven't seen those guys in 10 years. I never even touched a gun myself. You could always tell that to the judge. You see what you're up against, son? You could get as much as five years for this. And you play it our way and you'll be clean and you'll have... It's up to you, boy. You guys have really got it stacked against me, haven't you? And this is a lot of money. You can always tear it up. What's that? I said you could always tear up that check. Why don't you? Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? What do you want me to do, go to jail and be a hero or something for what? Well, I never took any dough for him. What would you call it? Escort work? Well, if you know any other rich babes who would like a little, uh, you know what, tell them I'm available at the same rate. Get out. Hey. Are you Mr... Get out of here before I kill you.
Where's Anne? The doctor's with her. Doctor? Is she, is she ill? What's wrong? I don't know. I was just talking to her as we agreed that I should and... Billy, is she all right? Yes, she'll be all right. She had a miscarriage, that's all. Providential, isn't it, Edith? I called a nurse. An extremely discreet one. Harry can pick her up at this address. Billy, I want to see Anne. Later. She's under sedation. I hope she's asleep. Telephone, sir. It's Mr. Slattery. Tell him I'll call him back. No, no, I'll talk to him, Marion. Marion, will you ask Harry, please, to pick up a nurse at that address? Yes, madam. Yes, Mike? I thought you'd like to know that other matters all taken care of, material evidence. There was a little Dutch JP over in Pennsylvania. I called some of my connections over there. Well, I'm grateful to you, Mike. Doing favors is my business, Joe, even though this one involved the destruction of an official record. I've never done anything like that before. Well, I appreciate that, Mike. Charlie here? He's gone, Ann. Gone. Gone. He wouldn't go Anne. anywhere. Please, Ann, dear. Please listen. He was no good. He ran out. Ran out? I gave him a chance. If, if he had torn up the check, I... What I, check? He took money, Ann. I offered him money, and he took it. I had to. I couldn't let you waste yourself, waste your whole life. I had to prove to you that he was worthless. All right. That's my good girl. All right. It was going to be such a wonderful baby. Strong, noisy, dark, talented. Such a strange baby to be born at 10 North Frederick Street. I can't live here anymore. I'm going away. We'll talk about it later when, when you're stronger. Now it's all decided. Going somewhere. New York. Somewhere. Yes, sir. Good night. Good night, dear Anne. Good night, my lovely daughter. Personally, I think we missed a bet. Could have had one good musician in the family anyway. Gentlemen, this is my friend, Joe Chapin. Mr. Chapin. I think you know almost everybody here, Joe. I think so. And you all know Lloyd Williams, of course. No, oh, well, Lloyd. If you'll sit down, gentlemen, I think we're ready to begin. Joe? Chapin. In this room, we're all realists. We don't kid ourselves, we don't kid each other. 
I don't exaggerate when I tell you that in this election, we could lose this state, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, the whole eastern seaboard. I think I can trust you not to repeat that. Nothing said in this room is for repetition. We understand. Now, Mr. Chapin, the party is deeply grateful for your generous, your extremely generous contribution. But please ask yourself, can we afford to gamble this year on a man who is not a proven vote-getter? Or, forgive me for saying this, on a man who has had an unhappy occurrence in his family that might become a public scandal at any time? Well, that's our question, and we're leaving the answer up to you. Of course, you don't have to give it to us right now. We can wait. Gentlemen, I withdraw. I told them, Joe. I told them class would tell. Pow! Right in the chairman's lap. <laughs> it was a good punch. Reminded me of the old days in the coal mine. After he'd quit. What was the good of that? Well, now, Edith, we're talking about Joe Chapin. You don't think he'd hang around where he wasn't wanted? Gentlemen, I withdraw. That's Joe Chapin in three words. Exactly. Where do you think he is now? Where I'd be in his place, off somewhere treating my wounds with alcohol. <laughs> Edith. Don't leave me alone. I'll leave you alone. Go easy on him, Edith, when he comes back. He's got nothing left now except you. Get out. Come in. Oh, pardon me. Where's the party? What party? Well, they said there was a party in 315. Oh. This is 215. You've got the wrong floor. <laughs> well, my mistake. Say, what you doing? Getting drunk all by yourself? That's the general idea. It isn't good for a gentleman to drink by himself. Well, why, why don't you join me? Don't mind if I do. I guess a gentleman gets lonely on the road. What do you travel in? What do I travel in? You know. What do you sell? You're a salesman, aren't you? Oh, yes. Yes, I'm a salesman. At least I was till a few hours ago. I just quit. Well, what were you selling? Myself. <laughs> Are you kidding? Why? Is there any law against selling yourself? Now, look, mister, you got me wrong. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to imply anything like that. I'm very sorry. I just meant I was trying to get a job. And it fell through? It fell through. And how? Say, you broke or something? No, not in that sense of the word, no. Well, then you got nothing to worry about. Big, strong, handsome man like you. I'm Stella. What's your name, honey? Chip. What's my name? My name is Chump. Chump? Chump. Joseph B. Chump. <laughs> now you're kidding again. You know what a chump is, don't you? He is someone who thinks he can get anything he wants by reaching out and grabbing it. Just like that. Now, that's all right for a kid. But when a man of 50 does it, he is a chump. And a useless chump. You're hurting my arm. I'm sorry, I... I frequently hurt people without meaning to. It's my specialty. Look, mister... I... You think you can buy anything you want. All you have to do is put down the money and it's yours. Like, like dropping a nickel on a pile of newspapers and walking off with the paper you want. You think everything's for sale. Everything in the world. Your daughter's husband. The highest office in the land. Everything. All you need is a nickel. 
I'm making a funny joke. Why don't you laugh? <laughs> yeah, well, it's been nice knowing you, mister. Real nice. Don't go. I'm enjoying our conservation, our conversation. Well, you see, I promised these gentlemen that I'd show up at this... I'm sorry, my party. dear. I've been most inconsiderate. Here, wait a minute. Here, for your time and the pleasure of your company. Well, this is a hundred bucks. Go spend it on your heart's desire. Buy yourself some happiness. Gee, thanks. Thanks a lot, Mr. Chump. Hotel in town, I got drunk. Never occurred to you to let me know where you were? It occurred to me. Were you alone? Yep. Oh. Did I have a woman with me? As a matter of fact, I did, yes. <laughs> I thought so. No, no, Edith. She just happened to walk in by mistake. I gave her a drink and sent her away. I can just picture that. The way I was feeling, I, I just wanted to be alone. I, I remember one time you were angry with me. We were in New York, oh, long ago. Fifteen years. That long? Yes, I guess it was. You stayed overnight in New York. Remember that? Without me. I remember it very well. Well, that time you wanted to be by yourself, and this time I wanted to be by myself. You're lying. I never asked you what you did. Maybe you should have asked me. What are you trying to say, Edith? Have I aroused your curiosity? Oh, that's something, anyway. You've always been so smugly complacent about me. I don't call it being smugly complacent. I call it trusting you. I always have, and I still do. And it would be unthinkable for me to have anything to do with another man? Y yes, I guess it would. Why? Yes, I'd say that. Why? Why? Because you're not that kind of a person. What kind of a person am I? How long is it since you've given any thought to me as a person? You, you have good reason to know that I'm not a cold woman and... Wouldn't it take some of the wind out of your sails to hear that somebody else knows that, too? Are you trying to say that you've had affairs with other men? Yes, I have. One affair, that time in New York. Edith, why did you decide to tell me this now? Just at, at this moment? Because... Because you let those politicians walk all over you. And because, just at this moment, I despise you enough to tell you what I really think of you. I've wasted my life. I've wasted my life on a failure. You're right, Edith. But you don't know why I'm a failure. You'll never understand that. What are you talking about? About a damn fool who never until this minute learned what was important in life and what wasn't. I wouldn't have made much of a president, but I could have at least been a good father. That's where I failed, with Joby and with Ann. Above all, with Ann, if only I... Well, it's too late now. It's, there's nothing left of that. And long ago, I guess I even failed with you, or you wouldn't have done what you did. Oh, and I suppose that you're going to hold it against me for the rest of my life. No, Edith, there'll be no reprisals. Whether we like it or not, we are both getting old. And I'm going to bed. Good night, Edith. Thank you, Carl. Arthur, a word with you. Yes, Billy. How long has Joe been taking two double martinis before lunch? Well, Joe's had a pretty tough year. 
What with his son, then his daughter, and now this political thing. One knockout punch after another. And another one. The sort of a sneak rabbit punch getting to be 50. <laughs> You're not implying that at 50, Joe's life is over. Oh, it's foolish to say that a man's life is over while he has anything in him to respond to new life. Where's that daughter of his? Ann? She's working in a bookstore in New York. Did he miss her? He misses her like the very devil. You know, someone from the firm has to go to New York next week. Maybe... First scattered returns from a few precincts in New Hampshire give Wilkie, Republican, 168 votes. Roosevelt, Democrat, 107 votes. We repeat that these are scattered... <laughs> I beg your pardon. I, I wanted to see Ann Chapin. Ann's gone out. She won't be back till late. Well, I suppose I should have called first. I'm sorry I disturbed you. Would you like to leave a message? I well, thought I knew all Ann's friends. I'm her father. Oh. Would you like to come in, Mr. Chapin? Thank you. I'm Kate Drummond. I know. Ann wrote us about you. May I offer you a drink? You probably have an engagement. Uh, no, I was just going to fix myself some dinner and curl up with a bad book. I'm having scotch. Scotch is fine. I suppose you know your father and I were classmates at Yale. Yes. How is Father Drummond? Father? Did you know that was his nickname? Oh, yes, but I never knew why. We thought he looked like a priest. I must say, he didn't behave like one. Soda? Please. He refers to you as... Slats? Slats. But that was a few years ago. <laughs> Won't you sit down? Thank you. I'm awfully pleased that you and Anne have become friends. We were never formally introduced, you know. We met over a cup of coffee at the art club. A couple of career girls on the loose. I'm a photographic model. I think I've seen you with magazine covers. I've made a few. Miss Drummond, now that I'm here, I would like to pump you a little about Anne, if I may. Well, you can try. Nothing too awkward, I hope. Does she confide in you? I know about her marriage, if that's what you mean. Thanks. You've saved me a lot of devious questioning. No doubt you have some preconceived ideas about me and my wife. Yes. Wait till you have children. You justify a lot of selfish acts on the ground that you are acting in their best interest. I hope not, but probably. And then you'll have to live with it. I have to live with the realization that I've destroyed the happiness of the one human being I ever loved without reservation, without limit. Don't you take all the blame, Mr. Chapin. At least half of it belongs to Mrs. Chapin. Whoever's responsible, it, it goes without saying, I want Anne to be happy. Is she? Anne is too loving to be happy without somebody to love. Does that answer your question, Mr. Chapin? The one you didn't ask? No, she isn't in love with anybody. Not a bit. I keep hoping it will happen. So you can get her off your conscience? I'd want her to be happy, even if she weren't on my conscience. Well, I think I've overstayed my welcome. Thank you, Miss Drummond. I'll tell Anne you were here. Mr. Chapin? I'm sorry I said that about your conscience. Anne's my friend. I guess... That's all right. It's good to know she has such a friend. I bought theater tickets. It was to be sort of a celebration with Anne. <laughs> Election night and it would have been fun. It's a shame to waste them. 
or if you're really free this evening. If that's an invitation, Mr. Chapin, I'd like it very much. Roger. Friends of yours? I thought so, but suddenly they don't know me. You're just being tactful. Surprised to see me out with a pretty girl. In fact, a dish and enjoying it. Are you? Can't you tell? Well, from what I've observed... You're observing a man having the time of his life. Take you to Hyde Park for a statement by Joe, Joe, I didn't know you were in town. <laughs> oh, uh, Miss Pearson, may I present Mr. Chapin? How do you do? Very pleased uh, to meet you. Miss uh, Drummond, Miss Pearson, Mr. Donaldson. Well, how do you do? My friends, four my more years good of that. Joe, you know, surprise, know Paul. You can't be a professional with an amateur, even a good amateur. Well, maybe I shouldn't have said that in view of your own recent experience. No, oh, I've stopped thinking of myself as the people's choice. Those fellas really let you have it, didn't they? Well, this worked out for the best. Oh, we're off. I want to get a good night's sleep. <laughs> the market's going to jump tomorrow, but nobody knows which way. Oh, uh, I'm glad to see you took my advice, Joe. Paul, I'll always take your advice. On the stock market, Miss Drummond is my daughter's roommate. Oh, I beg your pardon. Good night. Good night. Good night. He doesn't believe you. I don't care. Do you? You're a model in New York and unmarried. People are going to talk about you no matter what you do. These gray hairs are your protection. I don't feel very protected. Why not? They're just camouflage. You'd never guess this kid had a grown family, would you? <laughs> never to tape him, really. I just meant that until you said that to your friend, I'd almost forgotten you were Anne's father. What does that mean? Well, you haven't asked me if I was having a good time. Who well, are you? Best in years. Well, go on. A girl like you, you must have a million beaux. No, just one. One? I guess I must have Airedale blood. I can only hear one whistle at a time. Are you in love with this lucky one? I suppose so. Yes. You planning to marry him? Why do you ask me that? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I suppose I shouldn't have pried. What's pride got to do with it? P-R-I-E-D. Pride into your affairs. <laughs> oh. Well, I don't mind. I'm not sure that I want to be married to him for the rest of my life. And when I get married, that's the way it's going to be. Now I dislike this young man with a whistle. Why? For giving you cause to doubt him. That's no way to treat an heir, dear. The waiter is slapping his check. When a waiter slaps the check he wants you to pay up and go, he also reduces his tip. Is it time to take you home, Kate? How about one more dance? How about a dozen more dances? All right. Waiter. Yes, gentlemen. You know that stuff that keeps you awake, uh, what do you call it? I'll get you some right away. Not for me, for you. Uh, yes, gentlemen.
Wait for me. You want me to tell Anne you're in town? No, no, I'll call her tomorrow. Well, good night. Good night. You want to kiss me, don't you, Mr. Chapin? At my age, a kiss has other implications. At least the way I want to kiss you. Yes. Well, I can't imply any promises. Or promise any implications, or whatever I'm trying to say. After all... I'm Anne's father, and we met tonight for the first time. Well, yes. There'll be another time, Kate. I'll be back. I know you will. Oh, I know that. I'm way past where I ever thought I'd be with anyone again. Good night, dear Kate. Good night. The Yale Club. 50 Mantable. 50 Mantable Avenue. Night Owl? Night Owl yourself. Oh, I didn't know you had company. My brother, Joby, Kate Drummond. Hi. Well, hello. Joby just woke me up demanding bed and board. So I'll move in with you and he can have my room. Well, having seen Kate, I uh, could suggest a more original arrangement. <clears throat> Sophomore? Freshman, yeah. As of today, that is, I seem to be flunking out. That'll be a nice Christmas present for Father. Yale was his idea, not mine. I know, Joby. Well, I'm going to turn in. Where's your bag? No bag. All I need in the morning is a razor and a toothbrush. You must have an old razor you shave your legs with. You're so sophisticated and so vulgar and so wrong. Well, Kate, if you weren't such an ugly old hag, I could go for you. Oh, then swear wow. off razors. All my men grow beards. Good night, sweet prince. Something tells me I'm not getting across. You are. Well, who's first in the bathroom? You. Extra toothbrush in the cabinet. Well, good night. Good night. Hope you don't mind, Joby. That's just the way he talks. Why should I mind? I like it. Who's your new fella? What new fella? The one you were out with. Why should it be anyone new? Oh, come on, Kate. You stay out from nearly 2 o'clock, and then you breeze in with that look about you. Do I, indeed? Well, when you've been out with Howard, you always come home dragging your tail behind you. You're an observant wench, aren't you? No. Merely can't mind my own business. This is just a friend of a friend from out of town. And you're not talking? Good evening, Joe. Good evening, Edith. There's a postcard from Joby. From Bermuda. What's he doing in Bermuda? He's staying with the Harrisons. So is Anne. Oh. How long do they expect to be there? Over Christmas. I'll never get these cards answered. Over Christmas? Is dinner ready, Edith? You have time for another drink. Oh, Edith, I have to run up to New York tomorrow for the farm. Be gone two or three days. Whatever you say, Joe. Theater tickets. 
and a table at the Marguerite. I took a chance you'd be free this evening. I've been free every evening since Anne left. And the fellow with the whistle? Stop seeing him. Well, when you whistled. Okay. I wanted to stay away. Well, that's not quite true. I didn't want to, but I tried. I tried to. I tried to wish you wouldn't come back. <laughs> Like it? Wonderful. Let's not stay for the rest of it. Do you mind? Not in the least. Where would you like to go? Just walk. Somehow I don't want all those friends of yours staring at us. Not tonight. Cold? Just enough. I never knew what it was like before. All these years, I've heard about people being in love, read about it, but never felt it. But when it happens, you know. You're sure. Yes, you're sure. All the millions of men it's never happened to. And the millions of women. But it happened to me. It happened to us. Like the end of the world. Arthur McHenry and I used to bring the fellows up here for the hunting and fishing, but nobody comes here anymore. What was that? I don't know. <laughs> It's a bear. You know, I'm so nearsighted. For a moment, I thought it was a man. He's nearsighted, too. Watch. Hey, bear! <laughs> I promised to call me. I must have slept for an hour. Nearer, too. I couldn't bring myself to wake you. Here. What is it? A present. A present for me? I don't see anybody else around here. Open it. Right now? Of course. I've always been like this. Christmas, my birthdays. A present so wonderful. Lovely and mysterious. Before it's unwrapped. And what's inside is always a disappointment? No. But after all, it's something that came from a stool. What's in this one came from the heart, Kate. gives a girl a ruby, the least he can expect is to be called by his name. Joe. Thank you, Joe. 
This was presented to my grandfather in India. I have it made up as a pendant for you. I never dreamed of anything so beautiful. You can christen it tonight. I thought we'd run down to the lodge for dinner. There's, uh, there's usually a crowd there for the skiing. I think we ought to. Why not? Go out together where there's a crowd. Oh. I've been doing a lot of thinking. We have to be very clear in our minds just how things will be for us and for the people we care about. I can't go on living with Anne, for instance. I'll have to get an apartment of my own somewhere. That's where we'll always have to see each other. We can't go out together anymore. Let me finish. Now, you listen to me. I love you as I've never loved anyone else. Surely, deeply, completely. Do you really think I'd stand for that? You, my mistress, dodging your friends in an apartment on the wrong side of town? It's my decision, Joe. It's what I want to do. Thank you. And it's the one thing I'll never let you do. Kate, will you marry me? How could we? I'll ask my wife for a divorce. Would she give you one? She might. There's a reason why she might. I can force the issue. I never even thought about marriage. I can't give you up. Not now. I can't go back to Gibbsville, to Frederick Street, not to that house. I... I'm sorry. That was inexcusable. Whining about my own troubles. Joe, when a man asks a woman to marry him, doesn't he usually wait for her answer? Much more Swiss than anything in Switzerland. I've never been there. You'd like it. Are we going to Switzerland? It'll be fun to show you all the places you've never been, some of the places I've never been. Will there be anything else, sir? Anything else, ma'am? Thank you, sir. Sir, are you, are you all right? I'm fine, thank you. Well, here, let me help you up, sir. I can still get up by myself, thank you. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. Kate, Kate Drummond. I didn't know you were in these parts. Hello, Bill. Well, where are you stay? The friends. <laughs> well, you're not leaving now. We're, we're all gonna have a dance later. I'm afraid we have to go. Oh, come on, you can stay for just a little while anyway. Mr. Drummond, you make her stay. I'll uh, see that she gets home all right. The name is Chapin. Well, I'm sorry. I, I guess I, I, I sort of leaped the wrong conclusion. I, I mean... Uh, Kate, it's a friend of my daughter's, my daughter, Anne. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I know Anne Chapin. We're on our way up to Lost Lake now to meet her there. That's why we have to leave. <laughs> well, better luck next time. Good night, Kate. Good night. Uh, good night, sir. I'm sorry I crashed into you. It's quite all right, son. Good night. See, that's funny. I thought Anne Chapin was in Bermuda. <laughs> worried about my reputation. That's not what I'm worried about. It didn't mean anything, what he said. 
He just made a perfectly natural mistake. Exactly. He perfectly naturally assumed that I was your father. Please, I can't stand having you hurt. Kate, let's take a good long look. At what? At ourselves. Listen, come here. Look at what, Joe? At what that young friend of yours showed us. He's just a baby. A foolish, big-mouthed baby. We should be grateful to him. Grateful? I needed that bump he gave me. Maybe it knocked some sense into me. Don't you see, Kate, our getting married would be just as bad as the other thing, what it would do to your life? I... I lost my head this afternoon. Joe! Now listen, Kate. The rules are there for a reason. Why do we always laugh at the old character chasing after the young girl in the cartoon? Are those newspaper stories about the old hillbilly marrying some half-witted female of 11. I'm not really half-witted. And there's not that much difference between us. Enough so that our children would only know their father as an old man. Enough so that you'd be left alone at the time you most needed love and protection. When you're as old as I am now. That's why the rules are there. Love isn't everything, Kate. You can't live without pride. P-R-I-D-E. I'll take it. Don't be unhappy, Kate. I'm not. I can't tell you how un unhappy I am. I'm going away somewhere, far away. You don't have to. I'll stay out of your life, trust me. Maybe I can't trust myself to stay out of yours. Here's your ruby. It's yours. I wanted to give you something beautiful and extravagant. I still want to. I'm grateful to you for being all that you are. Go on up now, and I know when you're alone, you'll cry. But, Kate, we'll always have this, won't we? Hi, Lovebook. Wouldn't expect you. My mother here? She's writing letters, I believe. Thanks. Why, Joby. Mother, what's all this about father? Well, don't you think you owe me the courtesy? I had a letter how... from Dr. English. He says father's very ill. Dr. English hasn't even seen him. That's just the point. Some eye doctor had to tell him. Father went to this man for new glasses. He spotted a dangerous condition. Dr. English told you all this, didn't he, weeks ago? And suppose he did. Mother, you're going to make father get medical help. Are you giving me orders? Just because you're a sergeant or whatever it is, do you think you could order me? God orders you, not me. Oh, dear, 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 dear. <laughs> you must be higher than a sergeant to be so close to the Almighty. Have you even, have you even tried to stop him drinking so much? Your father's old enough to take Has care he had a hemorrhage? You know what that is, don't you? Has he ever vomited blood? Why didn't you call a doctor for him then? Because he wouldn't allow it if you must You don't know. ask permission when that happens. You get on the telephone Stop yourself. Stop yelling, Joby! 
How do you think it's been for me? The wife of a drunkard. Never able to accept an invitation. Listening at night to him, fumbling down the stairs for another bottle. Have a little sympathy for me. Maybe if you'd shown some for him, this wouldn't have happened. If you'd shown him just a little kindness, a, a little human Shh. warmth. Thank you, Harry. Hello, Father. Well, Joby. Good to see you. Well, get a leave? Well, I've convinced the general staff the Army could do without me for 48 hours. Well, this is fine. Just fine. Come on, I'll, I'll buy you a drink. Oh, I wouldn't do that, Joe. As I understand it, Joby intends to spend the weekend reforming you. Hello? Long distance? Oh, yes. Yes, she's here. Anne, it's for you. Long distance. Oh. Excuse me, please. Take care of this nibs, will you? Hello? Hello, Anna Banana. How's that vow of yours never to darken the doors of 10 North Frederick again? Good and firm, thank you. Then I might as well hang up. The old boy's in terrible shape, Anna Banana, and I've got to get back to camp. What's wrong, Joby? I got him to see Dr. English. He says it's a combination of things. For me, I'd call it a kind of galloping despair. What can we do? Give him a face to look at that he really loves. Get it down here as quick as you can. Have Harry meet the Express tonight. I'll be on it. I'll stay as long as I can. Right, right, goodbye. She'll be on the Express tonight. There is a good deal of speculation over what will happen when Allied forces finally effect a junction with the Russians moving in from the east. Tonight, the main weight of the Allied Expeditionary Forces offensive is shifting southward toward Hitler's National Redoubt. General Eisenhower's headquarters reports that the German armies are in retreat everywhere. Meanwhile, General Bradley's 12th Army Group holds the line of the Elbe River. Surprise. And it is really you. Please don't move. What on earth are you doing here? Oh, I got homesick all of a sudden. Well, that's fine. Here, sit down. I wish we'd known you were coming. We have had some young people in. I came to see you. Oh, that's very nice of you, Anne. Very sweet. Afraid I'm going to start blubbering. It's so wonderful seeing you again. I think I'll smoke a cigarette, if you don't mind. Over there, in, in the box. How's the bookstore? Oh, just fine. I'm becoming quite the businesswoman. Last month, my accounts came out even. I almost fainted. <laughs> but you must have some fun, too. Oh, well, I do. Don't neglect the social side. Next month, I'm flying out to California to be maid of honor at a wedding. That's a long way to go for a wedding. Yes, well, this is special. My old roommate, Kate Drummond. Kate? You never met her, did you? Uh, I stopped by to see you once, and she gave me a drink. Oh. Very beautiful girl. Mm -hmm. And she's getting married. Yes, to a very nice fellow she met in Santa Barbara. That's where she went when she left New York, oh, about five years ago. It was very mysterious, her running off like that. Kate always had a sense of mystery about her. She isn't an open-faced sandwich like me. <laughs> well, that's our trouble, yours and mine. Everyone guesses our secrets. Father, you know, Jopi and I were Have you thinking... seen her at all? Yes. She was in New York last month. Changed much? No, still the same. Beautiful, smart, lovely. And in love. Yes. No. Well, there's a difference between loving and being in love. Is there? Well, I'm sure that she loves Tom and he's crazy about her. It'll be a good marriage. 
But I wonder if she's really over the other one. What other one? Oh, it was a long time ago. She really had it then. Bad case. He was married, I think. She discussed this with you? Not really. Only hints. Well, let's hope she'll be very happy. Yes. Now, you'd better run along let your mother know you're here. I suppose I'd better. Go on. Then come back. We'll have a good talk like old times. All right. You dear man. My lovely father. You're sure? Yes, you're sure. The millions of men it never happens to. And the millions of women. But it happened to me. It happened to us. Good night, Joe. Good night, my love. Sergeant. Colonel. General. What's the matter? The guests are leaving. If we're going to make polite noises, we'd better go down and do so. Wonderful. Oh, oh you are stinking. Maybe you shouldn't. Nonsense. Never let it be said that Joseph B. Chapin, Jr. could hold his liquor. Oh, come on, <laughs> Joby. Now, don't know who it is. Come on. I can't permit you to do this. No, let's say goodbye to him. No! Goodbye! Please, Joe, please. He's a Just a minute. Don't go, anybody. Joby. I want to pay my respects. I've been remiss in my duties as son of the house. I want to express my appreciation to all my father's wonderful friends who did so much for him while he was still alive. Come on, Lloyd. Just a minute, Mr. Slattery. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to tell our friends here how you cut my father's throat with a dull knife. Go on, why don't you tell him? Governor, you tell him you were there too. Are you Mr. Hooker, our fighting editor? Joby, how dare you? I, I'm so sorry, he's not and here. Here's the greatest friend he ever had, his loving wife, his shy, dutiful, retiring wife. All she ever did to him was murder him. Joby, for well, heaven's sake. Well, it's true, isn't it, Uncle Arthur? You know she Joby. murdered him, Dr. English knows. Joby! She knows and how she knows. Oh, stop it, Joby. You apologize to your mother. <laughs> Madam, I humbly apologize for saying so rudely in public what I intended to say even more rudely in private. Joey. I'll take care of him. Just get everybody out of here. Be right with you, Harry. Goodbye and a banana. Goodbye, Joe. Oh, <laughs> wow, it's a funny time of night to have a hangover. <laughs> I should never touch the stuff. If Madam says anything... She won't. You said it all. 
Well, I guess this is the last time I'll ever see the old barn. The last of the Chapins. Well, not me. I don't count. Father was the last. The last Chapin of Frederick Street. They don't make them like him anymore. Well, you better go inside. You'll catch cold. I wish... You wish what? I wish he'd had something, Joby, these last years. Some moment of triumph. It was all defeats. He could have had just one small victory. You know what his real trouble was? He couldn't take advantage. He was a gentleman in a world that has no further use for gentlemen. Goodbye, Joby. Take care, Anna Banana. Take care. Want to give my love to Kate? You get in, Harry. Come in. Five minute warning. All right, I'm nearly ready. Oh, Kate, you look so... I can't tell you how you look. Starry-eyed, I hope. Well, everything you should look, including starry-eyed. Thanks. I still have a few things to throw in my overnight bag. Oh, can I help you with something? Um, my jewel case, over there. Thank you. Hey, where did you ever get this ruby? Isn't it something new? Did Tom give it to you? No. I've had it quite a while. You didn't have it in New York. At least I haven't seen it before. Or have I? I never wear it, Anne. Something to look at. And touch. I'm leaving it to you in my will. I wouldn't want it to go to anyone else. Kate, did my father give you the ruby? Yes. He was the one you fell in love with. Yes. Oh, Kate. You don't mind? Mind? Of course I don't mind. If you only knew. Kate, the night he died, we were talking about you. And he asked so many questions, I wondered why. But now I understand it all, Kate. That's why you left New York. You were running away from him. Not quite, Anne. He sent me away. I'd have done anything he wanted. He made the decision. Yes, of course. His little book of rules. It couldn't have ended any other way with my father. My poor, dear, stuffed shirt father. And a stuffed shirt didn't give me this. Kate, Kate, we're all ready. Coming. Kate. Rubies, rubies aren't good enough for you. Come on. We mustn't keep them waiting. 